G'day guys, welcome back to Tig Tech. My name is Petru, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys a even better way of doing a vulnerability scan on a on a network or a um, uh, on a device. Um, and for those that have seen my last video, which I did a video, I did a video about um, vulnerability scanning with Nikto, and in that video, I um, explained that the using Nikto for a vulnerability scan isn't that great these days because uh, sure it can pick up some of the common vulnerabilities but it doesn't show you the um, the actual CVEs uh, which are used by you know NISTA's database and uh, and a few others as well so they use the open source vulnerability database which was actually closed down a few years ago uh, because it wasn't um, there wasn't much attention to it. Uh, they didn't have enough funding, so they just shut down that database. So using Nikto these days, you could still use it to find some vulnerabilities in some older applications, um, but in terms of real use uh, scenarios, it's not really that useful. So in this video, I'm gonna take it a step up and we're gonna have a look at a script called Volners, which you can find inside. Uh, it's, it, I'm pretty sure it's built into Kali. I use Parrot OS and it's already built into Parrot OS. Um, otherwise you can get a Volners script from, uh, from GitHub as well. And I'll uh, hopefully remember to chuck a link below for you so you can get that. Um, so the difference is, is that the Volners script uh, is a script that's used in conjunction with Nmap. And I'm sure most of you guys have heard about Nmap. It's uh, just a basic um, uh, command line tool in Linux to do a network map, um, scan networks for open ports and stuff like that. Um, so you can use the Volner script, which is a script used to find vulnerabilities um, in conjunction with Nmap. Um, based off the version of the devices that Nmap is found. So I'll give you a quick brief overview of how that works. And um, I'll uh, also look up one of the vulnerabilities as well so you can see how that, how that works. So I'll just switch over to my Linux terminal. So this is uh, Parrot OS as I usually use. And um, I've got also on the side here, I've got a Metasploitable uh, Linux machine, which uh, I haven't really introduced Metasploitable too much in these videos, but it's it, you can do a Google of it, and I'll chuck a link below for that as well. Um, it's essentially a a deliberately vulnerable um, Linux machine. So you could say it's a vulnerable web server. Um, it's got vulnerable SQL databases on there as well. So it's, it's basically used just to test uh, or practice uh, penetration testing um, and even some exploits as well. So you should never use Metasploitable uh, as a production um, service, obviously. That would be really dumb. Um, so you want to try and keep that disconnected from uh, from the internet, I guess, or you know any live production because it is very very vulnerable. It's it's full of vulnerabilities. So we're going to use that as a as our target uh, to do this vulnerability scan. So the first thing you want to do, um, you shouldn't need to go into GitHub and get the vulnerable uh, script. Um, it should already be built built in. Uh, into Kali or, or Parrot OS. So I'm just going to use the built-in script that I have. Um, and the command is actually pretty simple. So it's just nmap and then you would use uh, um, the scan version which is uh, uh, lowercase s and the capital V. So that means the scan for version numbers. Um, and then we're going to call our script. So we'll do two dashes and then script and then we'll just type in volners, just like that. Uh, and then from here, we will put in the IP address of our target machine. So in this case, it's 10.0.2.8, if I remember that correctly. Um, and what we what you can also do is you can uh, put it into verbose mode, which will show some of the uh, of what it's doing while it's running. Um, otherwise, you'll just wait until the whole command has finished executing and it will just spit everything out. So um, we'll scan this 
So as you can see, we've got some things that are happening there. So it's discovered some ports as Nmap usually does. Um, it will also scan for services and their version number because I specified that in that command um, that I want to scan for version numbers. So here, if we scroll up a little bit, we've got a bunch of uh, CVEs, which are uh, common vulnerabilities um, and exposures. Common vulnerabilities and exposures is what uh, CVE stands for. And the first set of digits is um, the year that that vulnerability was found. And the second set of digits, I'm not too sure. I would assume it's just like the vulnerability um, number. Um, I'm not too familiar with that. But if we go down to, let's have a look at a good one here. Um, it, you've also got the the level of vulnerability, like how, how big the vulnerability is. Um, so we've got nines up here. Um, I might actually get this uh, 2011 4130. That one looks like a nice good one. It's high level as well. So we'll see what um, the NIST database says about that. So we'll just go back to the, the NIST uh, website. Um, so that's the National Vulnerability Database, nvd.nist.gov. Uh, and then we will search for that CVE that we've identified in our vulnerability scan. And we'll see what has popped up for that. So obviously, if you do this sort of scan on a production server, like a web server or um, uh, something that you're trying to scan for vulnerabilities to patch, obviously, um, if you saw all of those vulnerabilities, you're, you're, you're in a tough spot. That, that should definitely not happen. But you might find a few, um, hopefully they're not level nines. Um, but uh, yeah, so this one, it is a vulnerability in the Pro F, uh, FTPD, um, so which is a file transfer uh, patient. So that um, is a pretty big vulnerability. It allows remote authenticated users to execute arbitrary code via vectors involving an error that occurs after an FTP data transfer. So um, that would obviously need to be patched. Um, this is a vulnerability from 2011, so chances are if you did an update for uh, Pro FTPD, it should, uh, it should definitely patch that vulnerability. But that is just in a nutshell how the Volner script can be used to scan for vulnerabilities. Um, this still doesn't scan for all the thousands, tens of thousands of vulnerabilities that might be in, in a database somewhere, but it does certainly do you much better than, um, than Nikto. Um, when you start going up in vulnerability scanners, like when we start going into tools like Nessus, uh, which there, there is like a free version of Nessus, but there's also a paid version of Nessus, um, which does uh, vulnerability like uh, uh, reports and stuff like that, which you probably won't need um, unless you're doing it professionally. But when you start working with those sort of platforms, they will start looking at many, many more vulnerabilities uh, that can be identified. So that's pretty much all for this video. Um, I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. Um, this is basically just an, another method of doing vulnerability scans that's, that's way more effective than Nikto. Um, so if you have any questions on that, drop your question below. Give us a like, subscribe, bell icon, you guys know the drill. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.